videos and see all those old shows and different people that I've got the privilege to play with. Different places got to play all within this last 10 years. And uh, I've got some pictures I want to show you guys tonight and tell you some stories. It all happened on a night kind of like this, all wet and rainy. A few blocks down the road at a little place called Victor's Coffee Shop where I got a job being a barista and I just moved back into town. Brought my CD in there and uh, they had just one band that had been playing there up until I got there. And they played every few months and they were Sam and Ella and they called themselves Sam and Ella. Uh, that, was, that was the big thing going on in Redmond on a Friday night. And uh, so I started an open mic, and I started to invite different musicians out, and, and started to play the first weekend of every month, and then dare the neighborhood to come out and play an open mic. Still in tradition today. I wrote this song about Victor's Coffee Shop. It was a space that just happened at the right place at the right time. And I look out tonight, and I see some of your faces from that time. And, uh, sailing down the east coast from Vermont down to the Carolinas on a sailboat called Serendipity. Spinning 
what I thought was this little light in these towns that I've never been to before and was never going to go back just to see what it would be like to meet the neighborhood and see what the world we call this twirl. Each other. When they start telling other people, you should check this disc out. You should like hear this person. And then all of a sudden, you start making this charge, and another person pulls out an instrument and starts playing. A lot of times during the day here, there's a jam that goes on all afternoon here on a sunny day outside. The next artist I'd like to bring up uh, 
you want to come start coming towards the stage, Mr. Dylan. Dylan Warnick, I met when uh, a long time ago. I had heard him play uh, Hard Rain's Gonna Fall by Bob Dylan. And he played it here in the open mic, and I was like, oh man, it just blew me out of the, out of the water. So I was playing here with my sister at that point in time, Twirl, playing the first Friday of the month, and I said, why don't you come in, Dylan, and open up for us to play a show? And, um, and he said, sure, great. He's still just like, still green and new. And he comes out and uh, I said, okay, Dylan, you got one song. Come play it on the stage. Play your Hard Rain's Gonna Fall, the one I really like. Play that one. And then uh, at that point in time, the band, which was me and Grace and Marcos and Paula, two other percussionists from Orcas Island, uh, were gonna come in from the different doors, all different doors, and start playing drums and take over the room right when we get done with this song. And then the crowd will go wild because music is surrounding you. And I was always trying to figure out how to make tonight a night that just sparks. So we were armed and dangerous at the door, waiting for Dylan's song. The song, last chords play, crowd goes wild, just uh, crazy. Dylan's won the room over in one song. We start coming in, guns a blazing. Well, at that moment in time, Dylan had felt what it felt like to be under these stage lights on this stage, with you guys roaring, and he went into a next song. <laughs> Damn, I, didn't, I didn't hear that, because my drumming was so loud coming from that door, and we all come in, and the whole crowd turns and looks back at us like, what are you guys doing drumming during Dylan's song? We're like, oh, uh, excuse us, and we backed right up out of the sky. Then I had a very quick band meeting back here where everybody in the band voted that my idea was stupid. <laughs> Dylan played for like another 10 hours and <laughs> Dylan played another song and the band started. And never since then, we've been causing trouble together on stage here. Whether it's over a cup of coffee in the morning, just waking up, not knowing what to say in a conversation, so we'll play it in a song. Or taking a stage like a night like tonight. Dylan reminds me that was our most musical coordinated moment. Next time I booked him here, I just booked him for a night, and then I, he called me like five minutes before eight just to make sure we were still on for the night. There was no planning, nothing like that. If I can get it out, if I can spell it out, but you hear me when I tell you about what I gotta say. Before it gets too late, it's not as easy as they said it'd be, but there's something right about you and me There's something right about you and me You're like a color of a burning book You're the color of a sideways look From another cover top in a comic book You're the color of storm in June You're the color of the moon You're the color of the night That's right. You're the color of a fight You move me, you're like The color of the color part
waste You got too much life to face Where the life You guys know the song, if you guys wouldn't mind just uh, anting it in the band. And we'll uh, dedicate this song to um, a, a musician who passed away here in the last few weeks, uh, Levon Helm, who just uh, inspired those of us to sing the truth, the big fan, as we like to play a, a band song.
my bed We were looking for a place to hide When I saw her coming in the building Walking me side by side
Here's a song that Jill and I like to play that is about winding up in Spokane, Washington. Hard packed cigarettes in early morning rain. Lately, my hands they don't feel like mine. My eyes been stung with dust, and I'm blind. Held you in my arms one time. I'm lost, you just say. Freebird. Freebird. 
we requested that song on a nightly basis for like three years, and the only person I could find that knew how to play it was this seven-year-old kid named Casper. Yeah! I've been passing that around online, and he came in, played the lead guitar part, lead singer, I just played the chorus behind him. And then he even fell down to his knees in a screaming guitar solo. It's the little kids of this neighborhood. And I, uh, when inviting everybody uh, to come, I got a, a request online from a little kid, Jeremiah, cute little brother here, who wanted to play, me to play this song about, um, well, about how we look at spirituality, religion, uh, here at Soul Food, uh, some of the topics that are hard to talk about if you're not in a coffee shop. And uh, we were talking about who who do you see when you look up, kind of thing. And uh, this is the song. Oh Jesus, I love you, but I love Buddha too. From a Krishna Guru day, now the chain in Mohammed. All right.
and the next little one to come along, Taylor and Leah, in a month or so, or, but all I know is that um, the other day Taylor came and asked me advice, what do you do in that last month of getting ready for the birth, and I said, you know, I just panicked a lot, and then I, <laughs> I watched um, Ricky Ricardo on the I Love Lucy show, right before, uh, and that'll make you feel better, and, and it worked, didn't it though? Yeah, no. So hold that in our hearts over the next month, Taylor. Leah, another little, another little one coming into the world. Don't know much about me. Don't know who you are. We've been doing fine without you. You could only go so far. Church. Sorry, God, but you made it worse. You made me sin behind a fence. I was haunted by all the evidence. I guess you don't want me to think. So instead, I will dream and dream. Got you drunk to drive home.
Mikhail uh, first started coming into Soul Food. I first met Mikhail here reading it. Reading. It was our anniversary party here. Mikhail started uh, reading some Derek Jensen stuff, some heavy environmentalist books and, and conscious thought. And to work through those moments, he would uh, go and do the dishes between chapters. And we found ourselves that it had been a year, and Mikhail was doing dishes every day. <laughs> Mikhail was writing poetry that was the beat of the neighborhood, and we were bringing him up, and we were finding out what was going on by listening to the poems that he was writing about us. Um, Mikhail has uh, turned into our bookkeeper and our magic man, our poet with numbers, and has uh, graduated from uh, doing dishes to running the financial part of soul food and teaching us that a penny saved is a penny earned and that when we spend our money locally we give it back locally and not here. And you do the same thing with the truth of the words. I'd like to invite Mr. McHale up to speak a little bit. At the end of the day, this is what I remember. Starting with your own story. What you dream, you can grow. If you don't believe it, it can never happen. At the end of the day, everything you lose is but the echo that surrounds the world gone with a song. At the end of the day, when you believe everyone has left you all alone, you can recover all the lessons. It will just take time. At the end of the day, when it's all said and done, every path you choose takes you closer to what you've been waiting for all along. At the end of the day, when it's all seen and heard, you're hurting more than you're healing, then grace will not elude you. At the end of the day, when it's all felt and shown, and you're more angry than you're peaceful, then love will not desert you. At the end of the day, when it's all smelled and tasted, and you're more revengeful than you're thoughtful, then forgiveness will not forsake you. At the end of the day, there is truth in the notion that we need magic and miracles these days. At the end of the day, you want to know what love is worth, and if you can weigh and measure it, at the end of the day, no one knows the deepest secret. That there is half a red heart tattooed beneath your shirt because you've been in love. At the end of the day, you think about the way things change, about leaves and stones, about the future, about how you've taught yourself to live in the moment, go day by day to forget about wanting more for yourself. And now you're wondering about what is next. At the end of the day, this is what I learned. What you see, you can understand. And I know you've seen smoke and ashes and death. And you didn't understand any of it. You've seen love as well. And that has turned to be the biggest mystery of all. But you look at the outside of things, not at the true, ever-changing heart. At the end of the day, can you grant a heart's desire? Can you find someone who has been lost? Someone 
may be able to, but it's not me. I can only tell you what I lost. I can only tell you my story. At the end of the day, if you think you can measure someone's love, no scale would be strong enough. It would break to pieces under the weight. And if you don't believe what you see, you can understand, look at it from the inside. At the end of the day, all you need to do is open your eyes and look and see that you are loved in the already, always-ness of now having arrived with baby steps into that never-ending story of a life awakening journey that even death sleeping cannot end. At the end of the day, this is what I hoped. Before you go any farther, you should know one thing. What you look for, you may find. Desire can drive you for miles. It can lead you in ways you never would have imagined. A map can be written in ashes, earth, water, air. Take a step and keep walking. Don't be afraid to look back. In the end, every path you choose takes you closer to what you've been waiting for all along. At the end of the day, so you want to know how heavy love is? It's so light you can carry it your whole life. Maybe especially even if you've not been granted your heart's desire. At the end of the day, birds and bees always mean a garden. It's beginning. That is a fact. Gardens are stronger than buildings. They bloom when everything else is gone. At the end of the day, this is who I search for. My dearly beloved, someone once told me that love is an act of will. I was certain I had heard wrong. I thought love was a river, endless and deep. I thought it merely happened, washing over you like water. It was nothing to search for, nothing to force. I didn't understand that even when we can't control our fate, we alone have the last say in matters of the heart. We can give it freely, even in the worst of times, even when it isn't returned. At the end of the day, the frightened walk away when love is difficult. I know that now. You have to be willing to give everything away. You have to be willing to end up with nothing. Only then will your heart be whole. Because love is an act of will. You think it will just happen. You have to make it so. Even when it's gone wrong. Wait and see if love doesn't come to you. You have to go find it. Even if it's only in yourself. At the end of the day, I can't help it.
everything if you accept what's given to you. Sometimes it takes as much courage to stay behind as it does to go away. At the end of the day, the truth is, it's mostly always, usually never, about, really about, what you think it's about anyway. At the end of the day, how much does love weigh? As much as a stone, a feather, a rose petal, a leaf. It's more than we can ever bear and less than we have the strength to carry. It's an invisible miracle. It's right there in front of you and in back of you, to your right and your left, above you and below you. It's nowhere and everywhere. There's no place outside of you or inside of you where it is not. It's made out of silent stones. It's made out of air. Listen, breathe, drink it. At the end of the day, this is what I believe. I'm the last person anyone would have expected to believe in the future. But I do. I'm not hurrying toward it anymore. I'm inside of it. A lifetime, after all, can be spent in a single afternoon. At the end of the day is the beginning of another day wherein a world can exist in a first kiss. A story can be written on a rose petal. A life can be nurtured by a leaf meal. A song can be shared with a heart true. At the end of the day, and Coleman Barks calls this Rumi's harshest truth, when school, mosque, and minaret are torn down, then dervishes can begin their community. Not until faithfulness turns to betrayal, and betrayal into trust, can any human being become a part of the truth. At the end of the day, there's no one who comes here that does not know this. This soul food family is a true map of the world. With you there in the center, making home for us all. At the end of the day, perhaps only lovers and children speak softly lying together in the dark. At the end of the day, sometimes when you follow your bliss, doors open in the wall where there were no doors. When you swallow your pride, big feelings turn into small where there were no blames. When you run before you walk, balance becomes fall, as if there were no gravity. When heart space dances with mood, a boy questions not when he should, a girl answers not when she could. Sometimes love cannot conquer fears, just as truth does not always stop tears. Sometimes life cannot birth happiness, just as death cannot bury laughter. At the end of the day, behold the children. The way they put in all the colors, mix them up. We're not afraid of them. Color is life. At the end of the day, sometimes, when a two-year-old falls asleep peacefully in your arms, be thankful for the safe haven you are to them, and carry peace that personally within your heart. The world peace begins like that.
in you, in each of you, in each of your hearts. At the end of the day, if you don't know the truth, but think you do, it's not so bad. Your truth will do for a while. The truth has a way of walking up to you when you least expect it and offering you a choice for right action because we all get to choose our truth and walk within right action with the truth of who we are. At the end of the day, the more you love someone, the harder it is to tell them you love them. At the end of the day, everything will be all right. So if it's not all right now, it's not the end. Again, at the end of the day, is the beginning of another day. Within a universe comes a kiss. A story can be written on a rose. A life can be nurtured by a leaf. A song can be shared with a heart. A child can be loved by a listening attention. A heart can be opened with a compassionate intention unexpected in common hours in a community of familyness like this one here and now by being the change you want to see in the world thank you for listening Honor. Thank you, Cliff, for having me come up and joining me, and for all that you do. This place, this place is amazing. This community is amazing. You are amazing.
Circle, we went over to Wood Carver's fire pit. Come on up, up here, Carver. You're gonna pass up? Well, then, if you have a chainsaw, too, you could use that, too. I don't mind. He's the only person who makes Carver's little tiny feathers with a chainsaw. It's like unbelievable. Okay, then I'll play one for you, Carver. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Carver. And um, holding fast the spirit here in this town. The part about being in this town, if you drive down Avondale, you'll see the bear waving to you. And the eagles up there. And um, this next song is a song about, I wrote about that spirit. It's called Bathy, sitting in Marymore Park just thinking about what was important. Thank you. 
serving my second term as the chairman for the Arts Commission. I've been planning some crazy cool stuff.
say, say what you mean, mean what you think, think anything, oh, think anything, why you want to know? Well, I can't keep it in, I can't hide it and I cannot plug it away. Well, I'm not for your love, love keeps my blood, love spins my head. Say what you mean, mean what you think, and you think anything. Don't be shy, just let your feelings roll on by. And don't wear fear, but nobody will know you're there, you're there. You see you. Darling, oh my darling 